time, this year's virtual conference has become a truly global gathering space for those committed to disability inclusion. With so many participants from all over the world, it is easy to forget to mention the backbone of global gatherings like these, namely trusted partner organizations such as IMHCN. So thank you for organizing this valuable partner channel session. Therefore, without further ado, I wish you all well, hope you enjoyed the session, and I look forward to seeing you online and in the conference platform. Now, I would like to hand over to John Jenkins, the moderator of the session. Over to you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for uh, allowing us to share this, uh, this session uh, on your, on your uh, important conference platform. You're very uh, welcome. We have uh, uh, many presenters and we have one hour. So we need to keep the schedule very tight with uh, a limit of about seven minutes per person, which is a challenge for all of us. And also we hope to have a question and answer session at the end, so that we'll take questions and comments at the end of each of, of all the presentations. So I'd like to without further ado to hand over to Roberto, who's gonna set the scene for this session. Roberto. Okay, can I share the screen, Paul? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, I have to share the screen, Paul. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. This is uh, uh, the introduction to this session is about the international context of vocational rehabilitation and job placement. Uh, we we all know that the, uh, uh, how important it is to. Uh, uh, recognize that uh, there are so many declaration, international declaration by the UN bodies, particularly the World Health Organization has recognized that uh, 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 work is uh, one of the main ways for social reintegration for persons with serious mental illness and psychosocial disabilities, despite several barriers we can find like uh, lack of choice and opportunities, the system of uh, 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 loss of benefits and the uh, need for incentive systems, issues related to stigma and discrimination. And also the psychosocial rehabilitation typically included work in uh, vocational rehabilitation uh, uh, in, in the declarations uh, uh, which are done together with the WHO, for instance, in 1996, but also the ILO started from early 80s to uh, declare uh, that uh, work uh, should be uh, uh, um, uh, mainstream for uh, social integration. I law outline principles such as the least restrictive environment, the right to choose freely among the several options, the importance of the community and the supports, and the uh, uh, cost efficiency. Uh, yeah, of course, we know that uh, all these uh, uh, um, economical aspects uh, are related to a real employment uh, and uh, uh, that there's to be preferred to the over-reliance on public assistances. And then the issues of resources, that's one of the focus of our presentation today. Uh, uh, um, job placement, particularly social enterprises, were part of the process of closing uh, large psychiatric institution, particularly hospitals in Europe and in other parts of the world, and the resources transferred to community-based organizations. This was a, a very important part. We will come back quickly to this. Uh, and also, uh, this is recognized that uh, fair employment and decent working conditions are so important as social determinants of health and mental health, uh, important opportunities for health and well-being, uh, well and important to eradicate poverty, alleviate social inequities, etc. And World Health Organization uh, was uh, supporting very much among the cross-cutting principles in its uh, action plan, a multi-sectoral approach that has work at the center of the attention. We know how work is declared a human right per se among all the other human rights that the CRPD declares, particularly Article 26 about habilitation and rehabilitation toward uh, uh, maximum independence, uh, ability and full inclusion and the, uh, the connection uh, of work and employment uh, in, in the labor market. And this is also part of uh, what the UN more recently declared 2015 with the, uh, so with the sustainable development goals, 
uh, which underline that fair work and economic growth is one of those objectives. Uh, but on the side of persons with uh, psychosocial disabilities, it's important uh, to recognize that uh, returning to work is a vital element in the recovery process because it builds self-esteem, confidence, social inclusion, and also re-employment for those who lose the, the work uh, uh, is important to improve the quality of life, psychological well-being, physical and social functioning, etc. Uh, one of the key issues is uh, to build up social economy. Social economy is, con is linked to the concept of the promotion of human rights in a view of citizenship that can counteract social exclusion. And also it's clear that the inequity of resources remains a problem. So we have to uh, promote all the good practices that can invent the service sector uh, and uh, linking the development of the social economy to the right to work. This is one of the core of, the, of what we are going to discuss today in the session, because uh, uh, particularly in Europe, the European Commission promoted the, 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 the concept of social economy, uh, uh, where uh, 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 the social economy includes different forms like uh, cooperatives, mutual societies, non-profit organizations, foundation, and social enterprises, which are engine for social inno innovation. There are 2 million of social enterprises in Europe, uh, about 10% of all the, the business in the UE. So you can imagine how important is this aspect. Uh, also, they have the primary objective to serve the members, not just to obtain a return of the investment as the traditional mainstream capital companies do, and are based on the principle of solidarity and mutuality, the, the principle of one man, one vote. They are multiple goal, the multi-stakeholder organization, and they uh, are
to have an informal discussion for now. And when you come back in and tell us, we'll restart the formal session and pick up where, with the um, presentation we're hearing from Slovenia. Perfect. Thank okay. you very much for understanding. No we hope to fix this situation as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay. So maybe in the um, the people that have joined us on Zoom, uh, we can have a brief discussion about uh, Roberto's presentation and Jan's presentation. <laughs> I see that we are joined by um, Jan Eriksson. At least we were. Uh, Sinead has joined us. Uh, Rosanna has joined us. Where are the people? Yeah, I, we we had this happening. Uh, another Zoom meeting I was in the other day. We ended up playing I Spy. Yeah. <laughs> so. If you can't think of anything serious to do. But I, I, I just thought, yeah, sorry. if you, sorry, John. No, please, no, Paul, go on. Yeah, I was thinking, Jan, um, in relationship to the developments of creating community, are you getting a lot of support from government and from the institutions themselves? I mean, how's it going in that way? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, th th this team's becoming like official services. They are finance from we have the we don't have the uh, state health care system we, we, it's based based on the solidarity insurance but insurance is very much uh, supporting it because they see the effect uh, in the shorting uh, the admission and cutting the length of the stay and at the same time social social services or social ministry of social welfare is paying the social part yeah that's i think it's quite uh, uh, quite good that from the beginning you have all, all th th those two important sectors, social and health, involved. Yeah, and in the same time, uh, they understood the uh, importance of the employment, especially on the open market, and they really support this model uh, that these teams are from very beginning trying to get people on the open market, and there are specialists who are within the team and who really uh, doesn't do anything else and also inspire everyone in the team to be really in hard to get people on job. Uh, and that's, that's, that's official system. Uh, yep, that's what you see official paid. And, uh, and I think it's very good that the NGOs are contracting uh, as, uh, as a regular provider. Yeah, and they are really bringing innovative compared to the statutory organization as the a uh, lot of healthcare services are, but they are bringing very much this uh, spirit and idea of recovery and uh, inspiring also health staff, nurses and doctors uh, to, to start to think about uh, about uh, this way and uh, doctors not anymore saying, well, first we have to treat or we have to rehab the people. No, we understand uh, from the beginning, just go and work as everyone else. Well, I have a question, Anna, too. I have a question. Um, yeah, just to say, to say we're, 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 re we're ready to go again. So we're ready to go. They're ready to stream so we can go back to the presentation. Start recording then, Paul. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. Okay, right, so, so basically what I've... Um, Mm, I think when I stopped was that we have the, now these two pilot institutions who are going to close down in the next five years and they, they got both got lots of funding for the tr transformation and I one of the important parts of the two both of the projects uh, they just started so the, last year I mean for one it's going almost for a year but because of COVID on one hand, but because of also uh, lots of, you know, they needed lots of support to change to change their way of working, doing. Um, unfortunately, none of the people got employment or there was no real um, 
well, basically there was no real work on employment possibilities in, uh, and this other institution, which is for intellectual disabilities in Czernana they also have this part of employment and basically what their aim is, they just started a few months ago with the project, so, but what their aim is, because now they have these sheltered workshops, uh, lots of them, and um, how to change those. For some people, how to change those in order for them to support them in getting into real employment uh, and become employees, and for some of them, how to create basically personalized services on how to spend their free uh, time. Uh, so, and uh, these are the main topics. I think one of, yeah, in Cherna, one of the main obstacles we're facing at the moment, but also it's how to uh, basically cross or go through this big wall of incompetence yeah, and the belief that people with intellectual disabilities are incompetent, unable to work, unable to do anything productive. So this is one of the issues and I think one of the main ways of exclusion of at the moment of the people who are living this in this big institution, which is for children and for adults but it's qu quite optimistic because a lot like you can feel this ethos of the institutionalization in a way because um yeah you can see that they started like one of the first steps was for the staff to start talking to the users to see what they would like to do and then they realized okay somebody wants to be a beekeeper oh and actually there's a farmer who has bees and they he could start working there. And so we, they already found some small, like these first steps of getting out of these shelter workshops are being um, in place. Um, so yeah, that's from, I think I got had my seven minutes. Uh, so it's I'm quite optimistic basically that we will be able to create employment possibilities. And I will give the word to Rene, she's working in this institution in Dutoli in Kast. Um, yes, hello, I work in this institution um, and actually working with employment opportunities as and as Andrea said, we didn't have much improvement because of the COVID pandemics. Hello? Was I muted? Yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, okay, sorry, I didn't notice. Um, yes, I work in this social welfare institution that Andrea mentioned, and I'm actually at employment group. And as Andrea said, we didn't do many improvement because the institution is hermetically closed and we've been working from home a lot, but we decided to use this time and we prepared and applied to a project that I'm going to shortly present. And um, we've applied together with International Mental Health Collaborating Network, Club Azalia, La Colina, and two companies, and another institution, which is also in the pilot project that also Andrea mentioned. And the aim is to transfer the know-how and good practice from Italy, as Italian cooperatives have a long history of providing jobs to our population and also with the institutionalization uh, connecting to employment, which Roberto earlier mentioned. And through transnational thematic workshops, Italian and international partners who share their experiences and good practices. Um, but otherwise, the main idea of the project is to establish six um, information offices for employment. Um, there would be employed a social worker and a mentor who would assist um, people on the job if they would need assistance at the workplace to help them get included in the normal work. Um, and another service we would like to develop is personal employment package, uh, which is innovative uh, mentoring approach and a social worker with a person sits down and talks about motivations and desires and then constructs uh, his personal employment integration plan. And then through the information offices, based on this personal employment package, people would be involved in training and probationary work with employer and in real employment after all. Um, because people who are disabled or have harder hardships 
could get support um, from mentors of information offices. And um, we would also make a network of stakeholders who would be interested in employing our population. Um, besides supported employment, we would also conduct a training for a peer support specialist and um, together with Club Azalia, um, a practical course, create your own social enterprise where people could learn practically how to create their cooperative or something similar. Um, and there's another important part of the project, which is advocating policy changes, because this is the biggest problem, I think. Um, in Slovenia, the current legislation deprives many groups of the right to paid work because they often risk, risk losing their social security if they get proper employment. And um, even if Slovenia has ratified the convention on person on the rights of people with disabilities. Um, people in social care institutions are still denied of their right to work. They're not properly paid. They're like uh, do some random tasks or some, they also work in a laundry, but they're paid like one euro per, uh, per an hour. And we would like to change that into fair pay for fair, pay, fair work. And another cool thing that Italians have it's also a vocational training scholarship tool, uh, which provides some money for the newly employed person to be paid during the probationary period. So the employer more easily employs the person. So um, we would organize meetings and roundtables with some key actors and then design the proposal and submit it to responsible institutions with the help of um, Italian cooperatives and international mental health collaborating network. apply to we would try to find other means of financing to get the idea through that's it thank you very much thank you um now uh and angelo uh, uh, is your connection okay yeah yeah would you like can to go you next see can you see and hear me Yes. Yeah, may I go on? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, thank you for inviting me to this session. And I am going to speak about, to talk about uh, in individual placement and support in Italy and in Europe, um, which is a technique uh, aimed at uh, helping people with mental disorders to get into the free labor market and which has been uh, of great interest in Italy during the last 20 years after the de-hospitalization process uh, was over. You know, in Italy during uh, the first years of the reform since 78, till the year 1997, where the last mental hospital was closed. Uh, most programs aimed at ensuring uh, jobs and work to the, the mental, uh, to psychiatric patients uh, were um, including mostly social enterprises and other forms of uh, uh, accompanied work into shelter context and uh, but in after the, the these are still the major the most important uh, way to uh, ensure uh, jobs and work in Italy but uh, once uh, the community mental health system was completed, uh, we tried in many places in Italy to go a step further 
and help also our patients to be engaged into the free uh, labor market. And IPS, uh, which was developed in the United States in the 90s um, uh, by Bob Drake and Debbie Becker, is a very interesting technique uh, which uh, does not imply any form of mediation with employers or any form of sheltered workshop or um, a sheltered uh, job, uh, but supports the individual in his own search for the job uh, in the free labor market. And it bypasses all the mechanism of uh, stigma of uh, rejection, uh, just because, I mean, the single uh, patient uh, uh, is enabled through a specific support with emotional and practical issues to have interviews uh, with employers to uh, discuss his, his or her problems uh, on the workplace and and it simply uh, works uh, in about half of uh, people uh, who get into these programs. Um, it, the first uh, study of IPS in Europe took place in 2003, 2005 in six European sites um in london in groningen in rimini in italy where i work at the time and uh, in ulm in germany in sofia in bulgaria and it showed uh, uh, quite surprisingly excellent results uh, as well as in the united states and since then it has developed mostly in the Scandinavian area. So most Scandinavian countries have uh, quite developed IPS programs in the United Kingdom, where it is a national policy, in the Netherlands, where it is widespread in the mental health services, and in Italy, mostly in northern regions of Emilia-Romagna, Veneto, Friuli, and Lombardy. In the region of Emilia-Romagna, where I live and where I work is the region around Bologna, all community mental health centers provide an IPS program. And in Bologna, uh, where uh, there is a population of about 1 million inhabitants, last year we had 425 uh, users of the community mental health centers, which had IPS. Um, IPS, uh, in, of these 425 users, uh, about 50% had an access to the free labor market. And at each given time, about 45% of patients work, have a, 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 a job in the, in the labor market. Uh, th this is a a technique which is very welcome by users um, uh, because uh, it is based on motivation of patients. Um, does, there is no uh, preliminary uh, assessment of abilities of skills, but uh, it's very much based on on individual motivation and on support uh, by a specialist, uh, both in, in the emotional issues and in practical issues, like preparing interviews, I mean, having appropriate uh, dresses during the interviews, how to behave on the, uh, uh, on the workplace, um, well, uh, and uh, we have also a zero exclusion. So any uh, users of the mental health service can have access to IPS. And it, it's also, I mean, very, uh, very powerful in uh, engaging uh, users in, into their own empowerment. So uh, 
now there are new direction, and I'm going to end my, uh, my speech, new direction of development because, I mean, it was so useful and powerful that uh, users of mental health services that this attracted the attention of policy makers in our region uh, and in Italy to see if it works also for other typologies of disadvantaged people. So we have extended the application of IPS techniques to young uh, people, to youth in transition age from uh, adolescence to adulthood with transitional problems um, to people with substance use disorders people with intellectual disabilities and quite recently in Bologna also for in the general unemployed population and people who is enrolled in the list of employment centers and apparently uh, we have the same results I mean also in the general unemployed population uh, we have about 50% of access to the free labor market if people is supported personally. And probably this has a very deep meaning. It could mean that people with mental disorders have a very low access to work, not because of their skills, uh, not because uh, of their disability, but because of stigma. Uh, because they, uh, they, if they present as, uh, and also because of the demoralization of a specific issues. Also, the general unemployed population suffers from demoralization and sense of uselessness. And we have seen that if they are supported with the same technique of IPS, they have an equal access to the labor market as the mental health patients, about 50%. I think there's a, this can um, also say that IPS can be a general, uh, a general active labor policy um, because a active Labor policies are, are not only education, training courses, and things like that, but it could be mostly accompanying, supporting people to work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. We have a very interesting, uh, uh, comprehensive program around many countries. Um, now, um, can we ask the, Stefania? To, uh, to present. Good evening, here I am. Hi. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Roberto Medina and John Jenkins uh, um, for promoting this work session uh, within such an important global framework as the Zero Project International Conference. Uh, now I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to share with you a short video without audio in order to to show you some images of uh, uh, people uh, places and activities we we are engaged in uh, okay i hope it's going to work okay okay can you hear me while well, the video is going on okay very good so uh, um uh, uh, Located in Trieste, uh, in the northeast of Italy, uh, since 1988, uh, La Collina has been trying to offer job opportunities to people otherwise excluded from the labor market and, in general, at risk of marginality because of their vulnerability uh, linked to mental health suffering, physical feebleness, drug addiction, uh, but also social uh, inequalities and unemployment. So what we try to do every day is to combine the mission of job placement uh, with the presence within the free real market. Uh, the heart of our challenge is uh, to provide competitive quality services producing employment opportunities. Uh, 
our policy for inclusion is based on the heritage of practices uh, related to the Basalian uh, revolution from which uh, um, it originated. Uh, and basically the person is at the center of the path, but looking beyond the disease. And the greatest capacity of a social cooperative is to focus on the resources of the individual and create the conditions for them to emerge and be oriented towards professional growth and worker status. Our strategy uh, for job inclusion is based on a field training and a mentoring by other workers in the cooperative. Uh, these profiles, and this is a very important issue for us, are not sanitary, but specialized in the productive sectors that are part of the core business of our cooperative. They are professional tutors with human skills and above all, the ability to build positive and engaging uh, relationships. Uh, as you can see, uh, our traditional male, main activities are um, cultural services, including uh, museums, libraries, theaters, archives, uh, administrative services, both for private and public entities, communication and creativity services, such as uh, marketing, communication, graphics, web design, uh, we also organize uh, training activities and creative workshops for uh, um, children, teenagers, young adults, but also for social professionals, educators and teachers too. Uh, in addition, uh, as you can see, we offer traditional and digital radio services through our uh, historical non-profit uh, community radio, which is called Radio Fragola. Uh, we also run uh, tourist uh, reception services. Uh, La Colina uh, manages today five restaurants and one hotel. Uh, and uh, as uh, um, uh, uh, annual incomes uh, of almost 5 million euros coming from all these services that guarantee work uh, for almost 200 people with uh, an average of 35% uh, of disadvantaged workers among all that. Uh, what I would like to, to, to say this evening uh, is that the economic and labor market crisis, even before the advent of the pandemic emergency, uh, forced us to develop alternative strategies to keep creating job and inclusion opportunities. And um, the way to do this, in our experience, is definitely innovation, not only of services, but also of the ways we relate with public institutions, shifting from the logic of services selling to that of partnership and co-planning. Now, I would like to, to briefly mention to uh, innovative initiatives uh, uh, based on uh, the link between social inclusion strategies and the opportunities offered, offered by digital technologies. Um, as uh, uh, some of you know, uh, La Colina is uh, an historical partner of the mental health department of Trieste, uh, which is a World Health Organization collaboration center. And one of the projects uh, born within uh, the framework of this collaboration is the Basalia Itineraries Project, uh, which offers high quality training for professionals related to mental health, the Basalia Revolution, um, recovery paths, and the social uh, enterprises strategies. Uh, this, project this project recently evolved in uh, an immersive upgraded training initiative that provides e-learning and distant training too. Uh, if you want, you can easily uh, reach the website, which is uh, www.basaliaitineraries.com. Uh, the second 
project uh, um, is the so-called Palinsesto per l'inclusione, which is a, a virtual platform uh, based on a simple Microsoft Teams ar architecture providing communication, information, healthcare, entertainment and training activities for people in charge of mental health and addiction community services in the whole region. Uh, since April to 2020, uh, it was designed as a tool for reducing loneliness and isolation during the, during the pandemic emergency. Uh, and today it continues to be a great and concrete opportunity uh, to overcome uh, the digital divide. Uh, until today, almost 80 people took part in the program, uh, developing uh, digital, but also citizenship, housing, self-care, linguistic and cultural skills, together with the specific training programs aiming at active orientation to labor market and professional skills development. Another important result for us was the creation of employment and professional growth opportunities for our members and even for our workers um, coming from the so-called disadvantaged area. And they are still engaged in high qualified tutoring, teaching, entertainment, training and support activities. I'm going to stop. Thank you. John, you are muted, John. You are muted. Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Stefania. That was very colorful and very very, very good presentation about the, all the work that you're doing. Very good. Now we've been told we got 15 minutes extra <laughs> uh, <laughs> until quarter past. <laughs> Is that right, Paul? 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 Is Paul Hello? not there? Paul? Sorry, I was on the technical background. Yes, that's true. Yes, so we've got another 15 minutes. And I think that's the end point because they stopped. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. But, but the important thing, we got 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. So now then, uh, we can open it up to questions and answers. And we have some people that have joined us uh, also. Whether anybody wants to ask anybody a, a question or make a comment. I just start, it's interesting in terms of hearing these presentations of what's happened in my own country over the last 10 years in the issue about um, accepting people with disability to be employed in the mainstream. And it has greatly changed over that period of time. I think helpful, helped by many things. One is, um, anti-stigma, anti-discrimination campaigns that have been well resourced in the UK, and they've had uh, some effect. Uh, also, the fact that services are much more open and local, uh, and that people are seen to be benefiting from them. The other thing, so make people think now, the population, that people with mental health problems can recover and can, can uh, I mean, uh, play a, a meaningful part in terms of, of their own in community, particularly in terms of work. So the other, of course, is what's been heard of the IPS program, which has been very successful. All of this has led to a change of attitude by companies about employing people with mental health problems. And today, some of the big companies have a very positive policy about employing people with disability, of supporting them whilst they're in work, and also understanding what their needs are in the workplace. So, you know, huge companies have done this. Uh, Marks and Spencer's, Barclays Bank, uh, uh, Ernst & Young, um, uh, 
uh, Tesco's uh, uh, Unilever, all very big companies have actually had this policy. And it's not only big companies, also small local ones as well. So I think <coughs> society has changed. It's possible that society has changed to accept that people and that can benefit from people uh, joining joining society as full members and joining the workforce. So, uh, can I ask uh, John? I think that's. Uh, I think it's important. We uh, we also have uh, one of the program that Stefania mentioned is about. Uh, uh, Sorry, there's an echo. There's an oh, echo, Robert. Can you hear me? There's an echo. Ah, okay. Maybe you start. Try again. Okay. No, no. I'm. I'm just asking if, if it's possible to hear more about uh, La Colina. I, I see here Arturo connected. Uh, I think Arturo is the protagonist of some of these programs, uh, and Arturo. If you want to introduce yourself, I will be very happy because I do have the chance to talk uh, at, on the stage of the Geneva to interview and his experience. So I think he's well accustomed. Uh, uh, thank you, Roberto. I had uh, uh, the pleasure of uh, working with, with uh, Roberto and Stefania. Uh, even in the uh, first project that uh, uh, Stefania mentioned before, uh, which was the uh, uh, Basalia itineraries, and uh, uh, it was uh, really interesting uh, to uh, to see how uh, a person like me, uh, who had uh, a background of uh, mental illness, uh, had the chance to uh, present the project uh, at uh, Geneva, uh, at the uh, Mental Health Forum of WHO or uh, to um, uh, know uh, important people and uh, uh, professionals uh, like you. Um, and uh, this was uh, an, an interesting part of my job. The other part uh, I'm um, uh, currently working at now is uh, uh, the project uh, Palinsesto per l'inclusione, in which uh, I have uh, uh, the, the, luck, the, the luck of uh, uh, teaching IT and uh, um, and uh, uh, to organize uh, all the uh, technical uh, part of uh, this uh, uh, platform uh, of uh, training we are uh, offering to people that, uh, like me, uh, <laughs> have uh, faced uh, um, some uh, uh, troubles <laughs> and uh, um, uh, now are uh, having the chance by this uh, uh, means to uh, um, um, empower themselves and uh, to um, uh, uh, reach the goal, their goals and find a job in social cooperatives uh, or uh, uh, simply um, to, to, to be trained and empowered. Uh, I, I don't know what uh, 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 what else to say, but uh, it, it's a really interesting uh, uh, this uh, because uh, 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 by experience uh, you can uh, uh, recognize uh, uh, the, uh, the things uh, that are important for other people, and uh, uh, this is done uh, doing what you uh, are um, uh, best at, uh, like uh, for 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 me. Uh, the things I, I, I like to do and uh, I can do really well are uh, IT, information technology, and uh, for other people are others. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wants to make a comment or a question? Uh, John Schneider. Schneider, hi. Uh, Hi, how are you? Uh, I, I just wanted to say as well, um, a couple of things that stood out to me listening to everybody was I think everybody has a really good understanding of the importance of work um, for people with mental health problems or people who use services like myself. Um, one of the problems I saw through the years um, of initiatives around work was a lack of choice. So I think it's just really important to remember the choices is, is choice of opportunities and choice of work is really important. 
because that's what having a, a job that the last speaker mentioned his his area is IT. So being involved in work that's meaningful to you is what makes work work for you. So having choice for people is really important, having meaningful opportunities. And also the other point is the right time, the timing of, of work opportunities. Sometimes um, when you're first diagnosed, for example, um, uh, work seems, uh, you seem to be removed from the world of work for a long time, you can be, but it's important to give people opportunities uh, to work from the earliest stages of, of symptoms of, of um, mental ill health, um, which is a, whatever is appropriate for that person. So yes, my, my three things that came to my mind was about having choice, having meaningful opportunities and doing work at the right time with support. And I, I fully believe that everybody with mental health challenges can, if they wish to work, Absolutely. And and breaking down that the stigma for employers is, is also really, really important. I think that is why IPS works, because there's the trust between the organization and the employer. Um, a level of trust builds up. The person works there and they see the person for more than their symptoms or diagnosis. They see a person with capabilities and skills. Um, so that's all I want to say. I think it's I think it's great that this emphasis has been put on work. Really, really good. Thank you. Thanks, Renate. Anybody else? Uh, John, I think one of the key issues is to uh, this sort of opposition, which I don't think it's it's real. But uh, uh, maybe I would like to ask Angelo Fioriti is still connected uh, to uh, refer about uh, a possible. Uh, uh, coexistence of approaches related to uh, uh, social enterprises, social cooperatives, and IPS. If these things can be combined, uh, I know that some of the experiences are going that direction, and some of the points that are raised by the IPS are taken now today in a modern social cooperative, for instance. Uh, what do you think about it, Angelo? Well, uh... I agree fully with Shined that's a matter of choice. I think that uh, the, the more uh, mental health services have to offer, more choices they have to offer, the better. I mean, uh, our aim at the um, Department of Mental Health in Bologna is to provide uh, uh, choices for an individual. Do, do you and provide a very thorough um, uh, consultation about uh, income and job uh, choice uh, opportunities. So mo most people want to get a, a job depending on their training, their education, their aspirations, and uh, they should be allowed to try to do that. And IPS uh, is this, I mean, um, take your future in your hand. We trust in you, we support you and give you um, the opportunity to try and to, uh, to do what you have studied for, what you have been prepared for, what you aim to, what you, but, uh, is also perfectly acceptable that someone wants to have something less risky, something more protected, something more social, and something. Uh, and so, well, we have so we have 400 people in IPS, but we have also 400 people in social enterprises. And it, uh, the problem is, is when there is only one choice. So when people are forced to take a menu which has been prepared by institutions. <laughs> so in that case, we are de-hospitalized, but not de-institutionalized. And so it, there is not uh, some IPS is not against social enterprises and vice versa. Uh, so our IPS specialists in Bologna uh, or employees by social enterprises. So 
but we have agreed on uh, investing in more choices for mental health users, and I think this works. If, if I may comment, uh, Roberto, also. Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think it's really not one against another, but I think it's on, on what you focused and if you really create the opportunity, uh, good opportunity to choose if you want to choose uh, the open market, yeah, uh, and the, uh, the, the I think that as as uh, Angelo mentioned, uh, we have it too, that obligatory uh, a, a members of our committee materials team, every committee materials team has at least one um, uh, uh, in the replacement and support specialist, uh, and also what's important. This is within the mental health team. It's not like somewhere outside that the, the member of the team is that person and that he also promote, uh, let's say, energy and, and focus of all team on trying to people to get on open market. Yeah, And it's also quite different than you have it beside of the team, but if you have it in the, in the team, that yeah. we find out is much, much more effective. If we, of course, it depends on the level of employment. Before the crisis in Prague, there was really zero, nearly zero unemployment. That we really <laughs> managed to employ ninety percent of the people. Yeah, that you can do it. And they very much appreciate it, and they very often they prefer it against to be in social fam. We have a lot of social fam still, uh, like uh, 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 restaurants or, or something like that, where it's provide some organization, but of course it's half half uh, like a social enterprise, but still it's it's something. And I think it's important that, that, that the uh, official uh, employment offices are also oriented to that, uh, that side, as Angelo said, that it showed that this, uh, this approach can be for, for the others. And we also have such pilot uh, that it uh, seems to be effective. And of course, it's also good if, if the employers have some kind of benefits like tax or whatever, which also support, they are more open to, uh, to the employment of the people with disability. But basically, I think it, you find the people who are very motivated that they, they even don't care about the taxes. They want to do something for their good, for the good, for the for the others. It could be really small, uh, a small employer, but as John said, even the big one, yeah. That our uh, factory, the Škoda, uh, they really have a uh, lot uh, that we have the committee materials team and they are big employer. They can offer different levels uh, of, of the jobs and they do so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Somebody else? There is a comment on Sinead again. <laughs> yeah. No, she wrote in the in chat. Well, John, can I say a few more things? Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I, I would like to uh, emphasize that uh, I fully agree with this point about choice, about creating of different opportunities, about creating ways which are different uh, for uh, achieving uh, jobs and having a, a, a normal kind of life, the life you, you choose to have. On the other hand, I would like to, un to underline that uh, uh, the importance of social cooperatives in the experience of Trieste and in other places in Italy was so high uh, and at some stage, this experience helped the services to be uh, this more deinstitutionalized themselves. So, I mean, because the community services uh, can recreate the same dynamics, power dynamics, uh, condition of dependence uh, uh, toward people with lived experience, which are using services. Uh, so I think it's very important to recognize that uh, a, 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 a social cooperative that is really active uh, in a role of promoting uh, um, enterprises idea and uh, exploring the community uh, possibilities, um, provoking changes in the institutions and in services is, the, is, a, is, a, fun, is, a, is a fundamental partner with, the mental, with public services. Uh, and uh, they helped us to uh, 
uh, uh, develop real forms of co-production. So we uh, understood what does it mean co-production through the work together with social cooperatives. With, as a matter of fact, people working in the cooperatives that were previously using services, they became, for instance, uh, 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 workers in mental health centers were providing food, catering, uh, other services, uh, or uh, running a, a frontline uh, service like a call center for the for the healthcare agency. So they become, uh, you know, providers themselves of services. So this completely changed the dynamics and the, and the roles and created a different culture. So I don't want to undervalue. Uh, the, the, the work done by social cooperatives with, by changing the culture, the culture of public services and de developing something completely new. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, of course. But uh, Robert, also, I think that uh, this is some kind of historical perspective. Yeah, uh, definitely, they've been very important. And in 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 even in our research, we started with cooperatives thirty years ago. Yeah, yeah of course, the, this NGO started with cooperatives. They then moved uh, to more like this community materials team. And just now, they are like. Uh, uh, based of, of this, in fact, official, but still run by NGO. Uh, that only the, uh, and in the time you are talking about this idea of EPS wasn't such known. Then I don't like to say that people practice are not the right way, but only that we have to see it also in in the in some kind of pers perspective and the technologies, our technologies which are developed. And this IPS is new technology which which be developed even it looks very logic that only with this perspective yeah that what I want to say for those who are starting uh, let's think both uh, but I think if you develop the system which is as normal as possible I will say well go this way okay but I don't want to quarrel and I fully well, yeah, appreciate the, 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 the important thing is to get as many people as possible into work, <laughs> so it doesn't. <laughs> so all means are uh, are useful for th for that objective. <clears throat> I think we have a few minutes left. One, yeah, one minute to run, yeah. One minute left. So I think we need to thank everybody for uh, for their presentations and for taking part, for their questions and comments. Uh, and uh, I think this is something that we ought to perhaps continue in some other some, some other form, Roberto, as an ongoing, you know, discussion and discourse about this important subject, which is still uh, difficult for people to gain uh, work. And as Sinead said, people also need education in order to gain their their, their skills and their their to enhance their opportunities for work. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, thanks a lot. And thanks yeah. to, to Zero Project for hosting us. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.